During the past centuries, there have been some horrific and sadistic execution methods used to condemn someone to death, or to punish them for their crimes. Some of the most brutal methods have utilised weapons, which have been used on battlefields to strike fear into the hearts of the enemy. But one sadistic execution method was known as being blown from a cannon, and this was where a person would literally be tied to the end of a cannon, and then this weapon would be fired, blowing someone into many different pieces. It was utilised by a number of countries during the years, and it became infamous for its use in India, with the British colonists using it as a way of deterring people from rising up against them. Join us today as we look at the horrific execution of the men who were blown from cannons, and as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. As an execution method, blowing from a gun or a cannon had been used for centuries, and it was around during the 16th century. It was used by the Portuguese inside of their colonies, and was used by Mughal rulers against people who were trying to rise up and rebel, and these both wanted to send a clear message to their enemies, or prospective rebels. But it was used as part of the brutality of British rule in India, and they would use it as a way of trying to put people off rising up, and causing problems within the country. It was used to punish Indian sepoys, who had defected to the rebel causes, and these were deemed as traitors to the British Empire. But the method of using a cannon was horrific, as a weapon would be fired as someone was literally tied to the end of the barrel, then blanks, grape shot or cannonballs would be fired through the condemned. There were many issues with the execution method, as the pieces of the body of the victim would fly into the air, and they would be blown into thousands of tiny bits. Many of the bones would fragment and splinter, and these became sharp arrows that would embed into the skin of witnesses and the people who gathered nearby would become injured. There was little to no chance of escape, as the condemned would be tied and secured tightly to the end of the cannon. But when the cannon was fired, local birds of prey would circle above the execution area in sight, and they would then pick up and eat the remains of the condemned, and even dogs would wait for their feast. During one execution, this did go very wrong, as a soldier who was being fired from the cannon would slip slightly down the cannon as a shot went off, and one witness stated of the event, saying, One wretched fellow slipped from the rope, by which he was tied to the guns just before the explosion, and his arm was nearly set on fire. Whilst hanging in his agony under the gun, a sergeant applied a pistol to his head, and three times the cap snapped, the man each time wincing from the expected shot. At last a rifle was fired into the back of his head, and the blood poured out of his nose and mouth, like water from a briskly handled pump. This was the most horrible sight of all. I have seen death in all its forms, but never anything to equal this man's end. Another eyewitness who witnessed the proceedings of an execution using a cannon stated, The prisoner is generally tied to a gun, with the upper part of the small of his back resting against the muzzle. When the gun is fired, his head is seen to go straight up into the air, some 40 or 50 feet the arms flying off right and left, high up into the air, and fall at perhaps a hundred yards distance. The legs drop to the ground beneath the muzzle of the gun, and the body is literally blown away altogether, not a vestige being seen. But it was also used in many different lands, and one eyewitness who saw the execution method used in Afghanistan stated, The three men were then tied with ropes to the guns, their backs against the muzzle, the rope fastened to one of the spokes of the wheel, passed with a knot round the arms, over the muzzle of the gun, round the other arm, and then to the spoke of the opposite wheel, which kept the body fixed. The Portuguese explorer Francisco de Almeida would blow many people from guns during his conquests, and during one Portuguese campaign during the 1600s, one woman turned to cannibalism, and the conquistadors were so repulsed and disgusted by this, that they were going to blow her from a gun, but local churchmen and priests managed to prevent this and step in. However, in India, the British would use this execution method as a brutal addition to their arsenal of capital punishment across the kingdom and the lands. They would decide to adopt the old Mughal punishment, and it would be the East India Company who decided to begin with to execute thieves by having them fired from a cannon. Those who were involved in rebellion, uprising and protest, 
could face this horrific execution method. In 1806, during the Valor Mutiny, there was a massacre of British officers and soldiers under the cover of darkness, and a number of sepoys were also slaughtered in the reprisals by British forces. There were six men who were blown from cannons, and then further plans and uprisings would be discovered, then these organisers were subjected to the same execution method. There was a rare occasion in which someone who was sentenced to death in this manner was pardoned, as in 1784, a regiment rose up to protest their pay, and of the twelve who were to be blown from cannons, the final one was spared. He was tied to the cannon and believed he would be next, but this was not really an act of mercy, as the fuse on the cannon blew out three times, and the officer in charge then decided to pardon him because of this. But one man would be subjected to being blown from a gun, but then his death sentence would also be changed to being hanged in chains, and he would then be placed inside of a gibbet where he would die a slow and painful and terribly awful death. But this execution method was used a significant amount during the suppression of the Indian Rebellion of 1857, and a lot of people were executed in this way to stop further insurrection. It was stated that, on the 8th of June, two sepoys from the 35th Light Infantry were blown from guns. 10th of June, in Ludhiana, Peshawar, some 40 from the 54th Regiment were blown from guns. On the 13th of June, 10 sepoys from the 45th Regiment at Firzapur were blown from guns, two hanged. The same day in Ambala, 10 sepoys from the 54th Regiment suffered the same fate. The 26th of the same month, in Arangabad, one was blown from a gun, one hanged and three were shot. On the 8th of July in Jhelum, it's assumed that captured rebels would be blown away. On the 19th, Aurangabad, one was blown away, two shot. On the 5th of September, Satara, six were blown away. On the 17th of September, Multan, one was blown away, 121 were summarily executed. On the 23rd of September in Karashi, one was blown away, seven were hanged and 20 deported. The local body count on court-martialed individuals then came to four blown away, 14 hanged, 22 deported and three beheadings. At the end of October, in Arachihand, near Agra, one was blown away. On the 16th of November, Bombay, two sepoys from the 10th Regiment were blown away. But in many different regions and areas of India, there were dozens of people who would be blown from cannons and guns for their involvement in different rebellions and uprisings. But it would be a brutal and savage execution method which was aimed to keep the population in check and to keep the people from getting involved in mutinies and insurrections. But it would involve some of the most sadistic executions in history, and this would have been barbaric and disturbing to have witnessed for the thousands that gathered to see it. It really did show the brutality and evil of the British in India. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.